Hi everyone and welcome to Book Boop. My name is Rachel and today I have a book haul for you. I have 15 books that I have gotten just in the past few months, which is ridiculous, especially since I am running out of room. But I ended up going towards the TBR cart trend that almost everybody seems to be going towards. I finally fell into that. So now I have a TBR cart that I can put those books on. So I have a little bit more space, which is a good thing because I did, I ran out of room but I have an obsession with buying books this year for some reason, I need to stop. But thankfully, most of the books that I'm getting, I'm getting at really great prices. So I'm not necessarily blowing a whole bunch of money, but I am kind of blowing the amount of space that I've got. So. <laughs> Anyways, I'd like to go ahead and jump into these books. I'm sorry this video is a little bit late. I got behind on filming due to, you know, life. It happens. Things are crazy. But let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to try to let you as much let you know as much as I can about these books. I, some of them I don't know a whole lot about, but I'll tell you what I can. So the first book that I got, I actually found at Goodwill very, very recently, and that is The Twisted Ones by Scott Cawthon and Carrie, Kira Breed Risley, Reasley, I'm not sure. This is the second book in the Five Nights at Freddy's trilogy. I've read the first one. Um, I think it's called The Silver Eyes, and it was really good. I read it probably about a year ago, and it was super creepy. I mean, like, really creepy. I'm also a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, so I was totally into the whole thing as it was. But I'm excited to read this. Um, if you haven't heard of Five Nights at Freddy's, about it's about these basically possessed animatronics. If you think of like Chuck E. Cheese, that's the kind of animatronics it's supposed to be, and it's supposed to be at this kid's pizza place, but the animatronics have gone crazy and they kind of myrtleize people. It's really creepy. So this is the second one. I'm excited to jump into it. It's in really, really bad shape. It's got a huge tear on the front and everything, but it was super cheap at Goodwill and I've been really wanting to continue this series. So why not? Speaking of Goodwill, the next book that I, book that I bought I actually found just a couple days ago, and that is The Peter and the Star Starcatchers by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. This is the first book in the I guess you call it the Peter and the Starcatcher series. This is a retelling, I think, of Peter Pan. It's several books. I think it's like six or seven books. I don't know a whole lot about it other than it's Peter Pan, and that's all I need to know because I love Peter Pan. That's it. So the next one I got at Book Outlet very recently, and I've heard so much about it on BookTube just very recently. This book's been out for a while, but all of a sudden it's been getting a lot of coverage and people are saying how amazing it is. I don't really know a whole lot about it, to be honest, but that is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. I've heard that people that like The Diviners will really like this, and I personally actually have never read The Diviners, but I've been really wanting to and I'm hoping to read it this year. But I really don't know a whole lot about it, except I think it's supposed to take place during the 1920s again, I think, and it's about... I think a portion of time where magic is outlawed and they're trying to bring the magic back. I don't know. I don't even know. But I kind of am excited to jump into this, just even the fact that I don't know a whole lot about it other than people are really raving about it. So I think it's going to be fun to read and it's a nice thick paperback. I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to be good. So after that, I found a few books at my library's kind of like semi-annual sale or whatever recently and found some fun editions and they were super cheap so i loved getting to find some really cool books for really cheap to try and i got seraphina and the black cloak by robert Beatty. i've actually read this book before and it was i did really like it there's a lot of popularity behind it but i didn't have it in my collection i thought it'd be cool to have so i went ahead and purchased this one and it was only 50 cents so why not um i don't know a whole i can't really remember a whole lot about this except it has something to do with the biltmore estate and I think it's like a girl that lives at the Biltmore Estate and there's like a lot of magic and stuff going on. I don't know. She lives in the basement of the Biltmore Estate. That's all I can say. I can't really remember a whole lot about it other than the fact that I liked it. It was good. Then some other books that I found at the library, which I didn't originally have any interest in reading this series, but since it was in great condition and it was so cheap, I was like, why not? Why don't I try it? And that is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. And I know there's a lot of love behind this series. It's been out for a long time, but this is the first book in the series. And it's this gorgeous hardback book that's in fantastic condition. And I got it for 50 cents. So you can't go wrong. Again, I don't know a whole lot of uh, anything about this book other than though, other than the fact that it is attached to the Six of Crows duology. That's part of the world too. I don't know. I don't really know anything about it. So I will be jumping into this pretty darn blind, which I'm fine with. I think it's going to be really cool to just check it out. Um, I'm interested to see what I think about it, especially since I think there's supposed to be a TV show coming out from this universe. So it might be cool to kind of learn a little bit about it before I see the show, if I get to see it. 
The next one is one that I've had on my TBR for a really long time, and I found it at the library for, again, 50 cents, and it's in semi-decent condition. I was excited to get a hold of it, and that is The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Bador. 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 I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but <laughs> this is a Alice in Wonderland retelling, and that's literally all I know about it, and that's plenty for me. I love Alice in Wonderland. I love reading Alice in Wonderland retellings, and I haven't yet read this one yet. It is a first book in a trilogy, and I actually got the rest of the trilogy here too. The second book is uh, Seeing Red. <laughs> Couldn't find the title for some reason, my brain. And then the last one is called Arch Enemy. Um, I found, I got this one on Book Outlet, and this one I got at a place called Ollie's, which is a store that has some discounted books in it. And I found this one, these two, well, sorry, I found the first one and the third one, and then I realized I need to get the second one, so the second one I got from Book Outlet. But yeah, they are an Alice in Wonderland retelling that I supposed, think is supposed to be pretty dark and gritty, I believe, but I'm excited to try it out. Hopefully I can read these this year. I think they're beautiful. I love the spines on these. They look so cool on the shelf. But yeah, I think it's going to be fun to read these, and I know pretty much nothing about it other than the fact it's Alice in Wonderland, so it's good times. Speaking of this place I was talking about called Ollie's, there are several books that my book, my husband got for me for Mother's Day. He actually took me to Ollie's and was like, hey, I want to buy some books for you. Why don't you go through the section and pick out some books that you would like to get? So I actually found five books. One of them was um, the Arch Enemy book by Frank Bedore, the third book in the Looking Glass Wars, but then I found four other books as well. Um, let me go ahead and show you those. So I found Outlaw by Ted Decker. Again, I don't know much about this one either other than the fact that it's Ted Decker, and I love reading books by Ted Decker. I know that this book is connected to some books that I just read sort of in my T Ted Decker TBR in April. And um, yeah, I don't really know much about it at all other than the fact it's Ted Decker and I will pretty much read whatever Ted Decker writes because I've liked everything he's written. So it's gonna be fun to jump into that one. Then I found this one, which looks so intriguing to me and it's called Graveyard Shift and it's by Chris Westwood. And I, all I had to see about it is that it had something to do with, I think, battling ghosts and demons in a graveyard. I think it's a middle grade book and that's all I needed to know that if, if there's something having to do with ghosts and paranormal I am in I'm in so I'm excited to jump into this one maybe sometime soon hopefully this year I can read it and it just looks really cool it looks cool and it sounded cool so why not then this is one that I've heard quite a bit about as well I didn't really have a whole lot of interest in reading it but I saw it at Ollie's and it was really really cheap and it's such a beautiful book and I was like why not and it's a retelling and that is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow D-A-O I don't know how to pronounce that last name I'm so sorry but this one is supposed to be an origin story for the evil queen in Snow White I believe and it's supposed to have um, sort of like a Asian inspired feel to it or that's kind of like the lo locale of the story um, I've heard a lot of good things about it and thought I might give it a try I love retellings and I love origin stories as well um, I've read mostly origin stories about the Queen of Hearts a couple different ones but this one sounds like it might be kind of interesting and I've heard some good things so and it's beautiful look at that cover it's lovely after that the last book that I found at Ollie's is one that I was interested in reading but wasn't interested in reading because it is so far outside of my normal comfort zone when it comes to the topic and just the type of book but I've heard so much about this author so much about this book that it's ridiculous and I was like I found it all these it was super cheap and I was like you know what why not let's give it a try and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid if you haven't heard of this book before, then you haven't been around BookTube very long probably because this book is super, super popular. It's supposed to be about this fictional actress from sort of the golden age of uh, films, kind of think Marilyn Monroe, and she's never really divulged a whole lot about her life, but then at, when she gets older, she decides to reach out to this very specific person to write a memoir about her and about the seven husbands that she's had in her lifetime and to just sort of finally dish all the details about her life. Um, so it's supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be very intriguing and just exciting, and I, I don't know. I don't normally ever read books like this, 
ever like a contemporary typing it's just not me to read this but i've heard so many good things I'm like you know what let's give it a try let's see what all the buzz is about so i'm gonna jump into that all right i've got three books left and if you happen to see the one reading vlog i've posted so far then you probably have seen these books and these are books that i purchased from thrift books and i'm really pumped to add them to my collection and one of those no surprise of course is a book by mary downing hahn called the doll in the garden this is a very very special book to me because this is the very first mary downing hahn book i ever read when i was a kid and i immediately was hooked. I checked out this book from the library so many times. It's ridiculous, but I never actually owned it. So I really, really want to actually have it in my collection. To be honest, it's probably not the best Mary Downing Hahn book out of all sort of the ghost stories that she's written, but it's near and dear to my heart because it was the first one I've ever read and I'm really excited to have it in my collection and hopefully my daughter will read it someday. I hope. And I'm hoping I'll do a reread of it sometime soon, but I just, I love having it in my collection. It makes me happy. And the last two that I have purchased from Thrift Books was um, a book series I really have been wanting to read for a very, very long time. It's a duology, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere. Like, it's not a, my library or anything. I've just been having a difficulty getting a hold of it, and so I was like, I might as well just buy it because I really want to read it. And that is the Anna Dress and Blood series by Kendare Blake. It is Anna Dress and Blood and Girl of Nightmares. First of all, I love these covers. They look super creepy and awesome. Um, I don't know a whole lot other in the story other than the fact that the story is supposed to be about this ghost named Anna and she's nicknamed Anna dressed in blood because I think she's wearing like a white gown and then has like blood all over it or something and she's supposed to be this really just vengeful ghost that basically if you ever cross paths with her like you don't come back alive that kind of thing and it's supposed to be a, a this ghost hunter that's trying to get rid of her I don't know it's very paranormal and sounds exactly like the kind of thing I absolutely love to read so I'm really really excited to read these very very soon and excited to have them in my collection I hope I love them as I as much as I'm thinking I will but yeah, so those are all of my books. I got 15 books, that's stupid. Um, but I'm very excited about all of these. I'm hoping to read as much of these as I can this year, if not all of them this year. I just have so many books that I want to read. So we'll see. But are there, are there any books that you have bought recently or are there some books that you're super, super excited about jumping into soon? And also, have you jumped onto the TBR car trend? Because I have. I ran out of room for my books and my bookshelves and got a TBR cart and I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful thing. Just curious. On this side of the screen over here is my logo. If you click on that, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me on my book journey. On this side over here is a suggestion for another video if you want to watch another one right now. But thank you so much for watching. You rock. And don't forget to keep reading. Bye.